Welcome back to the DCS SIP Rim, where we discuss news and information about the world's premier combat flight simulator for the home PC, and it's from Eagle Dynamics, and it's called DCS World, and I'm your host, Prickly Hedgehog. Today, we take another look at third-party developer updates. This time, it's Miltec 5 and their reconnaissance helicopter, the B0105. We also learned a little bit about the improvements that have been injected into the South Atlantic map from the RASBAM team, and some more information about the integration of the stable and open beta versions of the game, including Steam. So stick around, because here we go. It's an exciting little newsletter. Well, let's begin, though, with the project that has been in development for a while now, and that's the B0105 from Miltec 5. Some of you will recall that this project has had its ups and downs over the years, including the possibility of it even being canned altogether. At one point, they had to hire a new engineer after another one left, and they even teamed up with Razbam for a little while before unteaming with Razbam, who said that they were capable of working on their own. But the good news was Miltec has always been posting plenty of 3D images of the work that he is doing on the helicopter, chipping away at that development process and now we have this interesting update. So ED advised that the B0105 will be available in three versions. The German version, B0105 PAH 1A1 slash VBH and the Swedish HKP 9A and lastly here the South Korean B0105. That's going to be AI only unfortunately. Aside from the liveries, all three versions will have different internal devices and are offered as separate versions. The external and internal 3D models of all B0105 versions will have a high level of detail that is close to photorealistic. All movable parts of the helicopter have been modeled, from rotor blade articulation to circuit breakers. Initial tests have shown the great potential of their new developer strategy for internal machine logic. Interesting. It fits well into the existing DCS API environment. The program logic changed from event control to situation control. This means that all devices have their own program and are interconnected within a global system. The advantage is that specific control situations do not require special coding. The result is an auto-generated output that is dependent on all of the connected devices. An example of this, they say, is auto rotation, which if you're not familiar, is when the helicopter loses power and the pilot is forced to use the cushion effect of the spinning blades to try to bring the helicopter down in a effectively controlled crash landing. Uh, and they do practice this as well. Now, the handling is initiated by the corresponding pilot inputs, the rotor system, as an independent device reacts like a real B0105. Even non-programmatically planned situations, that was a tough one, programmatically, planned situations are handled realistically. The system is termed Medusa by Miltec 5, it's kind of menacing, Medusa. It is a multi-threaded system that can handle all devices in different threads. I guess that means like it's multi-headed. The external and the internal cockpit models, electric system, engines, fuel supply, and rotor systems are in advanced development states. So that's really good news. The next steps are focused on flight performance, handling, and fine-tuning the B-105's behaviors. So when is it going to be released, you say? Well, it's too early, in my opinion, to gauge the overall release progress of the helicopter's development. Screenshots, as I said, are nothing new for Miltec 5, who regularly shares content, which is great. Would hazard a guess that the team still has a wee way to go with the flight model and that fine-tuning process, which can take many, many months. As we have yet to see any in-game footage either. Uh, discussion about that flight model progress is limited. We really don't have good uh, cues or clues as to when it's going to be released. We have, of course, seen, and some of you will be asking about the Kiowa as soon as a similar helicopter like the BO-105 is mentioned. That actually we have seen in-game footage of, but we haven't seen that for Miltec 5's machine. And I hope that uh, the Kiowa, which often gets uh, teased as a vaporware product, uh, that they're going to be in a position where they can release some more information about 
possible or pending releases of that. And certainly I'm looking forward to more videos, maybe some stuff from Burundus too, as I said earlier in the year. And of course, it's not just about the team's readiness too. The whole project needs to be signed over to ED for testing and quality assurance purposes. And remember that Nick Gray is very, very critical about making sure flight models are realistic. It must feel like you're actually in the aircraft flying. That's one of his stipulations. So if that is not achieved, then the project is going to get kicked back to the developer for more work. It's going to be a busy year 2024, I think, for developers. We have a lot of things in the pipeline, and you really do need to have clear air between modules to avoid saturation and getting lost in the weight turbulence of popular modules. Say the F4 is an example. A lot of people have said, well, the F4 is a separate thing. Not everyone's going to buy it, but it's just the noise too. And as I said, that kind of wake turbulence from a big module that comes in, blows the community out of the water, creates a lot of fuss, a lot of drama, a lot of uh, content creation um, material, such as from people like myself. And that can overwhelm, let's say, another developer who's wanting to release a map around about the same time you need, as I said, that clear air. So we shall see. I'm excited about this module. I think it's great that we're getting more and more of these interesting helicopters that are filling the um, e-hangers, if you like. And that's good news for Rotary Wing fans. Let's uh, see how the progress develops and let me know what you think of this cool little helicopter coming to the game. Let's turn now to maps and another third party developer, Rasbam, and the South Atlantic map. That, since its release, has been provided with a number of updates, including new airfields, improved visual appearances, and performance too. They have also resolved bugs. And this is now a much improved map that will continue to see further development this year. A large amount of work has gone into modeling and improving all towns, cities, and small hamlets. This includes new building types, points of interest, and optimizing them for a boost in performance. Razbam have also invested time and expense in aerial photography drones to improve the terrain distribution aesthetics. And in fact, um, um, Spectre showed me some of the work he was doing that with with his drone. That uh, was a really cool concept as well. So Razbam will be focusing on further ground texture and normal map improvements in the coming months. They advise here to make sure you update to the latest version to enjoy all of these new updates or consider a purchase of this large, unique and historic region of the South Atlantic. Now, as many of you know, I was lucky enough to get pre-release access to this map. It seems like quite a while ago now, almost two years and did some testing of it. And it's really hard to believe how far along the team has come. I think major improvements to the core engine have also helped. But I also know how much work Spectre and Ripper put into this map. Literally, it's thousands of hours of programming time and development. I still think it remains one of the most ambitious maps in the game, just because it encompasses such a massive landmass with regards to the South American continent, which stretched the technology on offer at that time, especially within the constraints, uh, constraints at least, of file data sizes. So one of the benefits of some of the newer mesh technology, based on my understanding, is that it reduced the jagged edges seen in earlier versions around the mountain areas, which also had the benefit of reducing the overall size of the map's data file size. That gave the team a little bit more wriggle room in terms of fleshing out other areas that they weren't able to do before or had intended to, but just uh, couldn't within those constraints. So in simple terms, the map is prettier while also having more objects without overflowing any data caps. I suspect as time goes on, maybe in the next 12, 24 months, some of these data caps may remain fluid in nature. Uh, those of us who do testing with uh, DCS often run multiple SSDs and M.2 drives that are they're really getting bigger and bigger, uh, but still relatively affordable. So I wonder how much longer we've got before some of these data caps expand. Um, I don't want to get into all the details because I'm not sure how much I can actually properly testify to this anyway and what I'm actually allowed to talk about. But, um, you know, there are limitations on on how big you can make these maps, basically, uh, just for you know, convenience, um, and also accommodating the needs of, of the community. If the, if the maps get too large, even some of the modules themselves, if they're too detailed, some members of the community run into basically bandwidth problems and also being able to run some of the some of the content on their computers. So it's a, it's a tricky area. So again, we'll see how the next 12 to 24 months play out in terms of development. 
Uh, but in the interim, the South Atlantic map sits at a healthy 80 gigs uh, in your file folder. Its nearest rival, which is Syria, that's just shy of 63 gigs. I still love flying in the region. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And if you actually want to learn a little bit more about how rugged, stark, and beautiful parts of the area are, even today, check out the book The Wager by David Gran. Now, this book covers the somewhat doomed expedition by a small fleet of British ships looking to capture Spanish gold ships in the 18th century, which was almost wiped out rounding Cape Horn. They battled horrendous storms for weeks on end, making very little progress against the wind, and they actually lost hundreds of men and boys to near starvation and scurvy, which kicked in. It's actually a really fascinating tale of seamanship, bravery, mutiny, and human tenacity. It makes the bounty story look almost tame by comparison. I, I was unaware of the story. It's absolutely amazing. So uh, they ended up, uh, the wager itself ended up getting wrecked on the coast of Patagonia. Uh, where they were uh, forced to survive for a couple of months, uh, several months there, and it uh, got pretty nasty amongst the remaining crew. Anyway, I digress. Just a little plug for a book there. I love my history here. And I think it's going to be interesting to watch how map development plays out, because remember that ED is also tackling their long-term goal of the global map, which is clearly some way off, especially if we're still plugging and supporting existing maps. We also have several new maps coming to the game, like Cola, uh, we've talked about Afghanistan already, and ED plugged Iraq. And then interestingly enough, Iraq right now, and the surrounding regions for that matter, it's becoming rather relevant right now as tensions in the region don't show any signs of dissipating. So that'll be a really useful map for some quite interesting scenarios, I think. Lastly, ED plugged a group I haven't heard of before known as Digital Controllers, who provide training and support for those looking to become air controllers to a global standard. This mission by the team is designed to allow for cohesion in inter-squadron events by standardizing ATC and tactical control. So if that's something that you're interested in learning a little bit more about, and it does seem quite fascinating, I wish I had more time to learn some of these things, I'll post some of the links here to this in the description below if you're interested in that. It looks pretty cool. It looks very, very interesting. Now, something we didn't see discussed in this week's newsletter, but cropped up, remember, last week as a discussion point, and that was the integration of the various game versions. Big Nui took to the forums to remind us that this consolidation effort was going to occur this February. No specific date was given. I imagine, well, it will be actually part of the next big patch. Uh, you'll simply patch the game as normal. Uh, this will eliminate the need, remember, for the multiple game versions that we currently have. And again, that we discussed last week. Of note, he indicated that subsequent patching will occur roughly every six weeks to implement updates. And again, that will depend on need and any testing results that they have. So it could be more, it could be less. Again, it depends on how things flow. So the patching then isn't too much beyond what we currently have, but I suspect not having multiple versions of the game should eliminate some work for the team and free up some of the time that they spend on that for other things. And I don't think, well, at least again, I suspect it isn't an insignificant amount of time having to do that. So again, that energy can be put into other more useful things for the team. It's going to be very interesting to see how the game evolves this year. And I think 2024 is just going to be an important one for ED and DCS world. Remember, too, they have Microsoft Flight Simulator. While they don't directly compete in the combat area, that is going to be a big attention getter for flight simulation in general. So it's going to be an interesting year for ED and how they manage their modules. The various projects that seem to be on the cusp of wanting to be injected in the game and whether or not all of the things that we've seen from the 2024 and beyond video uh, if there's room for it this year. So they've got some management uh, challenges ahead of them, I think. Uh, and if the Vulcan API goes ahead and m provides game improvements, um, the successful release of the Phantom, the successful release of Maps, uh, working around Microsoft Flight Simulator, all of these things are tactical considerations that ED is going to you know, have to manage carefully. And I think it's an exciting thing to see. So we'll stay tuned for more. All right, smaller newsletter from ED ultimately this week, but I suspect we could be in for a decent patch this month. 
as described. Some have been bringing up questions relating to a possible Phantom 2 release as well. I certainly think it's possible, but I have no inside knowledge. If I did, I'd probably still be sworn to secrecy anyway. So I did take the time to read through the Phantom Manual last week. Didn't have time to dig through all of it, but that was really interesting to start reading. A little bit of history about the aircraft and the cockpit setup and stuff like that. That release was, at least of the manual, is a very positive sign about my predictions for a quarter one release for the Phantom. Naturally, I could be wrong, but it's fun to speculate because we're getting pretty close, I think. So we'll see what happens. Thanks again for all the support, the likes, the subscriptions, and the discussion points in the comment section below. Keep doing that. It helps the channel chug along. Keep your eyes peeled for more content coming. Uh, thanks to some suggestions about some improvements to the channel and other topics that I can discuss outside of news. I really appreciated that. That's definitely something that I am working on. Um, I always have tons of ideas. I start writing things down. And when I forget to write things down, then I, um, I lose uh, the opportunity to do some of these things. The challenge is just time. I have a very, very busy schedule. Don't have a lot of time in the evenings these days. Uh, working with Pimax on the VR stuff. I've been working up a big script for that and gone through several iterations. That's been kicking my butt. Finding time to fly, getting used to VR, writing scripts for the news, uh, thinking about other projects, history, things I want to do. So yeah, I, I have a lot of content planned. Uh, just trying to find time in the pipeline. Uh, in fact, maybe if these updates aren't as uh, numerous, this year maybe there will be time for me to do other things but we'll see how it goes stay tuned <laughs> this is the short uh, uh answer there uh keep your eyes peeled we'll see you next time on the dcs sit rep thanks for putting up with me this is prickly hedgehog and i hope you're all doing well out there keep on flying we'll see you next time on the dcs sit rep cheers all right three one additional traffic pros 020 20, 3, 000. Greedy 5, 1, climbing out of 23,000 for uh, 360. Charlie, 3, 1.